flawless victory. Ghost of Tsushima Legends isn't getting any new content, so what is a dedicated player base to do if they want to keep challenging and perfecting themselves? Well, fighting to be at the very top of the weekly leaderboards for the game's toughest challenge, Nightmare Survival. Ranking at the top of these leaderboards requires a profound understanding of the spawn waves, the challenges that you need to complete, and the class builds, but also because of how the game rewards completion time, it means trying to beat the game as fast as humanly possible. So in a way, the guys fighting for the very top are speedrunning Nightmare Survival. In this video, I'll be taking a look at the strategies, builds and skills that players are developing to beat Nightmare Survival as fast as possible. Why? Well, because I find this level of overthinking things to be absolutely fascinating. But before we get started, I want to give a huge thanks to Liquid Drone. Really, dude, I cannot thank you enough. Liquid is one of the top players out there and he's been my main source of information for this video. So big thanks to Liquid and his team for sharing their builds and information with me. Personally, I don't really run the leaderboards very often due to lack of time, but if you want to watch me play some Ghost of Tsushima and other games, you can watch me right here on YouTube every Monday and Friday. Alright, let's get started. Before getting into some of the really clever and interesting strats involved in getting the best score, let's talk about the meta or the basic setup that's required to even have a shot at getting a good rank. Nightmare Survival has a weekly modifier which might make things like healing less effective or enemies deal more damage and so on, so this does have an impact on what builds you use, but unless you get something like fire immune enemies, you need to run two hunters and two ronins. This might come off as a surprise for some players, but the Hunter and Ronin have the highest damage output in the game, way higher than the Assassin or the Samurai. Now, you do need proper builds to actually reach this damage potential, and that means you have to focus the Ronin on damage and not healing, so things start to get really interesting, because you need to strike a balance between staying alive or healing and dealing as much damage as possible. If you don't have any health, you'll die to any small mistake and thus won't be dealing damage at all. But ideally, you want to focus on dealing the maximum amount of damage possible because after all, you are striving for absolutely perfect execution. I think this contradiction, this uh, trade-off if you will, perfectly showcases how well-crafted the classes, the gear and the combat system is. And this is still evolving by the way, just a few weeks ago, the preferred setup was running a fire ronin and a healing ronin, but that's now changed because a new, better build has been found. If you've ever seen videos on speedrunning, you will be aware of how strategies evolve and change over time as things get increasingly optimized. Well, that's very much the case here as well, and the addition of weekly modifiers just makes it that much harder to find the absolute best build combination for each class. So. Two hunters and two ronins. But why not four ronins or four hunters? Well, the answer is quite simple. You need hunters for any challenges involving headshots and their huge damage potential. And you need ronins to get some healing and for their insane AoE damage using the bomb packs. The hunter build isn't really nailed down yet, which is again down to the versatility of the builds being so good that it's hard to pinpoint an objectively best build. While there are some basic principles like using the skipping stone bow, there is a significant amount of influence from personal preference and playstyle. Some archers will prefer a higher draw and reload speed, while others will go for more damage. Arguably, they are both achieving the same thing but going about it in different ways, since both of these will lead to increased damage. Depending on enemy grouping, the map and the waves that you'll be handling, you might want to go for an ult build or an explosive arrow build, which revolves around reducing cooldown. So even things like which techniques to pick aren't set in stone. However, perks like Pinpoint aren't really used because at the top level, archers should be able to land headshots consistently. And of course, everyone is using explosive arrows because the stunning arrow sucks and increase status effect duration because those two combined maximize the damage output quite a bit. The first line of techniques isn't as clear cut though and is probably map dependent. Executioner can stack up really nicely with the ult if you're firing it up close, 
but Hunter Unleashed also increases DPS in basically all scenarios by giving you more explosive arrows more often. As for the Ronin, the fire build most people used to run looks like this, but this is being run by only one of the Ronins now. I will link to these in the comments by the way. The second Ronin is now running an absolutely insane build developed by top player Peepo, which Liquid told me about, so I'm going to share it with you guys. This is the Heavenly Strike build, no healing, no fire damage Ronin. It might seem strange that foregoing the fire ult leads to dealing more damage, but the way this works is as follows. So Ronins get to do an insane amount of damage with the bombs and kunai because you get this technique which increases damage from ghost weapons, right? Well, that's further increased by 40% with a really good roll on the stealth charm and spirit kunai. You then have increased fire damage and status effect damage, which is basically even more fire damage paired with oni and melee damage. This maximizes both the amount of damage done by your bombs, but also from Heavenly Strike and Way of the Flame. And let me tell you, the damage that you get from that Heavenly Strike Way of the Flame combo is nuts. This high crit damage, if you will, is obviously extremely useful in Nightmare Survival. How often have you had waves end with one or two Spironi or other high HP enemies remaining? Most enemies will die from a combination of AoE attacks, like the Firebombs, the Hunter's Ultimate and so on, but some Oni have such an enormous amount of health that they will outlive all these attacks with a bunch of health still remaining. The Heavenly Strike Way of the Flame combo aims to eliminate that problem. It is just an incredibly clever build. All four players are running smoke bombs with munitions, but I will explain why that is later on. Okay, so that's the basic setup. Now things start to get kind of crazy because we get into really specific things that most players haven't even thought of. So first off, the rolling. Turns out rolling around is faster than running, so you want to roll all the time. But you can't just spam circle. Well, I mean you can, but if you want to get the fastest speed possible, you need to do a short pause between each press, because at the end of the rolling animation, there is this forward step that gets cancelled if you roll too soon, and that step makes you go a bit faster. Top leaderboard runs are around 25 to 30 minutes, so every second you can shave off to get better positioning or help clear out an enemy goes a long way. Ideally, you should do this all the time, but it's way more important at the start of the round. As soon as the round starts, you have to clear out the enemies in three areas and then cap them before the waves actually start. This is an absolutely crucial part of each run and it's where most restarts happen because there is little point trying to outpace a bad start. So as soon as you spawn... Autobots, transform and roll out! The next issue right off the bat is enemy positioning in this initial phase. Enemy location is random in terms of which type of enemy spawns where, which has an impact because some enemies move faster than others. And since the fastest way of clearing an area is to run around, draw aggro from every enemy and then start attacking them once they've grouped up, how long this takes can be quite random. It's easy to understand now why runs get restarted at this point. There's also some nuance to who goes to which area and where you group the enemies together, since being able to use one of the explosive barrels to deal even more damage to the group of enemies will go a long way. But you also have to think about the sightlines for the hunter, you know, to be able to land their arrows properly, and who's going to finish first and potentially reach and help other players with their own sector and so on. It's, it's really quite complicated. Okay, so after this initial phase, the waves actually start counting down. Now, I mentioned the smoke bombs earlier. They are incredibly important, maybe the single most important strategy in the entire run. The idea here is to run where the enemies are spawning and drop a smoke bomb at precisely the right time to get both the pickups for your bombs and arrows from the munitions perk, but also to minimize the duration of their cooldown and more importantly to stall the enemy. With the exception of dogs, enemies will not move past a smoke bomb for a short time, which gives you enough time to bomb them and AoE the entire wave. How the team is distributed to catch each wave is also something that needs to get researched and optimized 
since tight clusters favor the ronin, but a more linear or spread out spawn favors the hunter. This also means that in areas where the spawn wave is very large, you ideally want two players and at least one hunter who can shoot enemies that might get past your initial attacks. For top level runs, you basically want to have bombs already in the air and arrows already cocked before the enemies even spawn. So you land as much damage the second that enemies actually materialize. Remember, there are 25 waves, so shaving off a second in each of these is a half minute difference, which is a lot. Okay, I need to pause for a second and talk about how insane players are and how awesome this is, because the entire concept of going this far to perfect your gameplay is just incredibly compelling to me. All right, moving on. Another necessary trick is jump canceling. Whenever you perform an action that's not a regular attack, like throwing kunai, activating way of the flame, or dropping healing incense, your character slows down and performs the corresponding animation. When you jump and perform these mid-air though, you get to keep your momentum and the animations are also shorter, which again saves a lot of time since you'll be doing these dozens of times per run. So you need a solid start that's both incredibly optimized and also gets a lucky enemy distribution. Then you need to jump cancel almost all your abilities and juggle cooldowns in such a way that you'll always have at least one smoke bomb ready at the start of each wave. In case you didn't know, wave orders aren't random, they are fixed. So knowing the order and location of each of the three waves in the 25 rounds is absolutely necessary. There are lists online detailing this, but you also want to note specific information like where Tengu spawn, where Spear Oni spawn, as well as which waves have which challenges and develop strats to complete those challenges as fast as possible. Some challenges like parrying enemy attacks also require a certain amount of luck in getting the enemies to attack frequently enough to not lose too much time. Some of the three waves that make up a round will only start after the previous one has been dealt with, so just imagine how much you need to practice to find the absolute best combination of player distribution and attacks to fully optimize this. The level of skill required to beat the leaderboard nowadays is absolutely insane, and my guess is it's only going to increase with each passing week. It's a combination of execution, knowledge, and class building that I don't think you get to see very often, and it'll be very interesting to see how it evolves over time. I wonder if we're ever gonna get an OP objectively best hunter build at some point, or if the weekly modifiers are ever going to make the assassin or samurai viable for the top level runs. Who knows, maybe explosive barrels start getting used in more specific waves to kill enemies faster. One thing that I forgot to mention is the fact that nobody uses dogs or bears for these runs because of how unpredictable they can be. You will often find enemies get stuck dealing with dogs in weird locations, which would absolutely torpedo a top level run, so the only shrine purchases that you want to do are healing, fire, and ammunition. So that's it for leaderboard runs, or leaderboard speedruns. This level of commitment will hopefully show the devs how much people appreciate the effort that they put in building such an incredible addition to one of the best open world games ever made. And hopefully that means we get a Legends 2 at some point in the future. Okay guys, thank you for watching. I will link to all the info that you might need down in the video description. Let me know if you enjoyed the video by giving it a like. Also feel free to drop a comment and let me know what you'd like to see in the next Ghost of Tsushima game. As always, thank you for watching and I hope I will catch you in the next one.